Uh, and another thing that we've recently been being contacted about is uh, places euthanizing for starvation. Um, if a bird comes in too starved, they actually want to euthanize it. Uh, we have a, a really strict uh, eating plan uh, that's, we've never lost a bird to starvation. Uh, so we really, we do try everything. We, we learn a lot from the birds that we get. We're, we're constantly learning from each bird that comes into us. Uh, and that's, that's how we learn how to take care of each bird. But we're never going to take care of a bird unless we know exactly what type of bird that is. A lot of people talk about uh, LBJs, little brown jobs, little brown birds that you can't identify. Uh, but we have to identify that bird before we can treat it. Because if you don't know what it is, you don't know how to treat it. You don't have any business treating it. Uh, everybody, everybody will do a little program or a little, uh, a little demonstration here. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody pick your favorite bird. Now, as you're thinking about that bird, and you're going to be that bird now, tell, think to yourself, where is your habitat? Where do you live? What are you eating? When are you eating? What time of day are you active? Who's your neighbor? Who do you see around you? If you can answer all of those questions, then you can rehabilitate that bird. But if you can't answer those questions, there's a good chance that bird's not going to survive. So we have to know everything, whether it's an insect eating bird, a bear eating bird, if they can live with one bird or not another bird, or if they can be outside in the winter or inside. Uh, it's all, it's a science. Rehabilitation is definitely a science. Um, then some of our songbirds live together, but for the most part, a lot of our birds live separately. Uh, Fonzie here lives by himself because he thinks he's a human. Uh, but he does have a girlfriend that visits him every night and hoots to him. And we can see her out the window, and I, I, she hasn't given up yet. So, I don't know. You must be quite the stud, Fonzie. <laughs> he thinks he is, too. Crows, yeah. Uh, crows, a great horn, um, eagle. Yeah, but I mean, it's, we haven't been seeing quite as many cases of it um, in recently. And, but summer, we're still very wary with some of our outdoor birds, yeah. um, making sure that they stay protected from mosquitoes and that Probably a big thing would be, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but now, because um, I've gone on a lot of rescues for eagles and so forth, is lead. Yeah. Lead. Yes, lead in, is the in, biggest in issue. both ammunition and tackle. Uh, even copper-coated hunting rifle bullets that are copper-coated shatter. And to kill an eagle, it takes a piece about that big, tiny. And so even well-meaning people, if they've shot something and they leave gut piles, if the bullet is shattered, then there's lead in there. So that's another. Now a lot of recover. By the time it's recovered, we've spent over $2,000 in medication alone to save that eagle. So in the long run, using lead costs a lot, lot more. Uh, Another reason, since Reggie is a uh, nonprofit, another reason uh, besides the safety of the birds is money. Uh, buying live mice or live rats, I think a live rat costs three dollars. Fonzie, uh, I was there when he came in as just a youngster. Young great horned owls will eat a dozen and a half mice per day. We trap uh, our own mice that are running around the facility. I will give those. Um, so a lot of times the, the store-bought mice and rats um, aren't a big part of their diet. Their diet is so natural and it's really important for birds that are going to be released to get a very natural diet. Uh, I heard a story of a, I think it was a, a barred owl or a great horned owl. Uh, it, was, it was raised at a, a rehabilitation center and they fed it nothing but white mice. So they went and released this owl, and it started going after white golf balls. Oh, <laughs> so sure. you, you got to be able to give that bird the most natural diet that you can uh, so that that bird knows what it's supposed to find when it gets released. Uh, now, a lot of the adult birds that do come in actually won't even eat white mice. They don't recognize it as food. That's not food to them, uh, so we can't even give it to them. Are any birds that you want to come back out? 
requests. We can take requests. Did you see they're big hogs, but they're, if, you, if we had a red-tailed hawk here this close, the one difference you'd see would be their feet. Yeah. Legs and feet. Well, the legs are feathered, but the feet size. See, the red-tailed hawks are going to take bigger prey. To They're going to go rabbits, red squirrels. You know, there's very few times. She asked if veterinarians were involved in the care at our facility. Um, a lot of times with the bald eagles, um, if they do die, unfortunately, because we have to send them to Colorado um, to the eagle repository, we can't do any sort of dissecting. To, but most of these guys are able to heal um, on their own or from just a little intervention from us. Which is very surprising to a lot of uh, other rehabilitation centers that do a lot of hands-on. Oh my god, we have so many turkey vultures, we didn't have any room to bring any, but we have some that love to come to programs. In fact, they sit up here and they just lift, open their wings up and they just, they love when people are staring at them. <laughs> When you go out to the facility in the summer and you drive up the long driveway, very often in the trees there are about 20 or 30 of them sitting there looking at you ominously. <laughs> Back when I was still working, I mean, I'd always check my pulse and, and wave. And, 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 and. Yes, their I'm biggest good. calamity, why do they all come in? Are they hit mostly by cars? Uh, variety. There was yeah. one, the one in the program was actually in a fire, yeah. one of them. Uh, and suffered uh, smoking. Do any of the don't really like it? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just walk over there? Bob comes home. Yes, the pretty spot does include barn owls. Yep. Yeah, I've actually made Bob fall asleep over there. <laughs> this summer. Uh, feel free to come by. We do have tours where you can see a lot more of our education birds and some of our birds that don't travel. Uh